220. The Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. Now that means we need to have an ear to hear, right? Psalms 46.10, be still and know. Uh, uh, 1 Kings 19, Elijah was out there. You had the tsunami and the earthquake and the fire and the thunder and the lightning. But God spoke in what? You know, this church knows the Bible. I say praise the Lord. Our Father in heaven, bless us this morning as we uh, take up the study of the brain. For uh, Give me a mind like yours. Give us a mind like yours. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. What? Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. It's what? That Christ. Now, the people in the back row may not be able to see, but that's okay. The people in the front row, row will. The lesson is sit in the front next time. So I'd like to study with you the physiology of change. Now, all improvement requires change. This is a picture. We have many nerve cells. I'm sorry. We have many cells in the body. Red blood cell carries oxygen. The white blood cell, uh, immune system, infection fighter, Schwann cells, coat the axon, beta cells, make the insulin. But the cell up here, what's it called? What kind of cell? Brain cell, also known as a, starts with an N, neuron or brain cell, brain cell neurons up here between your ears. How many do you have? More than, a lot. More than the stars in the sky or the sand on the sea? That's all the earth, not just Barbados. More brain cells than there are grains of sand on the sea. That means the brain cells must be very what? Small. Now the last part, the brain is plastic. It organizes and reorganizes itself. It is changeable. You shape and reshape your brain. You do something, the brain begins to change. You do it again, you do it again, you form to what? A habit. Is it hard to break a habit? We're all creatures of habit. I can prove it. This morning, you did the same thing you do. Well, it's a Sabbath, maybe not. Most mornings, you get up, you do the same thing every morning. For me, I get up, put the dishes up where they go. I drink my water. I go for my walk. I have my study. I'm a creature of habit. Now, you help me. I'll be asking many questions. You give answers. Now, the second fact about brain neurons. Uh, if you notice this last part, when a neuron receives information, because watch this, open, close, open, close, open, stay open. The mind commands the hand, right? Uh, left leg go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, stay up. Now, is it one nerve cell going from, it's a central nervous system, the brain connected to the hand. Is it one, ner is it one nerve cell from here to here, or is it a chain of network? It's a chain of network. Now, in this chain of neurons going from the brain down to the hand, the last part, it says when one cell signals another, it can either, it only can say yes or no, stop or go, yay or nay. That's all it can do. That's all the brain can do. It says yes or no. The brain does nothing except make decisions. If it does something other than make a decision, you tell me what it does. One time a nurse jumped up. She said, the brain controls the heartbeat. That's a decision. Come on, it's a decision. The brain does nothing except what? Makes decisions. You're either going to eat the fourth piece of cake or you're, you're going to rob the bank or you're, you're going to church or you're, yeah, it's black and white decisions. The brain makes deci yes or no, stop or go, yay or nay. This is how God built the nerve cell. Now, I threw in something from Councils on Health. Isaiah 30, verse 21, you'll hear a word behind you saying, walk ye. That's the only way God can speak to your soul, through your brain nerve cells. I'll read it, because you might not be able to see it. The brain nerves, which communicate with the entire system, are the only medium through which heaven can communicate to man and affect his inmost life. Change his heart. So the devil knows this. He wants to knock out your brain cell. Can he do that with pornography? Can he do it with food? Can he do it with a short temper, an angry temper? Uh, James 1.20, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. There are a thousand ways the devil can knock out your Revelation 7, 2 and 3, Revelation 14, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Hold the winds until my people are sealed in their what? Foreheads. Revelation 1, 2, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm talking a little fast because I'm looking at the clock. And I've got something I need to finish by 1020. So the, uh, God's name is written on their what? 
forehead, forehead, the front part of the head, the brain, the reasoning centers, the prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe. This is where it all happens, and the devil knows that, and God knows that. It's the only place God can abide with me, fast falls the evening tide. This is where he abides, in the front part of our brains. And I gave you two Bible verses. There are 22 more. President Obama stole my health lecture. When he was running for office, he got up and he said, you know, we need a change in the United States. Something's got to change. If we ever want to see improvement, something's got to change because all improvement requires. And the people all say, yeah, that makes sense. Do humans like to change? Proverbs 14, verse 12, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of what? Death. I don't want to change. And then Jesus said, Amos 3, 3, well, two can't walk together unless they what? Be agreed. Isaiah 55, 8, my ways aren't your ways and my thoughts aren't your thoughts. Somebody's got to change. And the Lord said, I never what? Change. Malachi 3, verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same today and forever. James 1, 17, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow nor... Mm -mm, God does not change. He's calling the Seventh-day Adventist church to make some changes. Is that easy? No, but it helps if you know how the brain works, and that's what I want to study this morning. Most of this is going to be science. I use one Bible verse, Romans 7, 23. Paul said, I see two laws. I see two laws. One's up here, and one's down here, and they are at war with each other. Is that true? I'll give you an example, this one. On the packet of cigarettes, it says, if you smoke this, it will kill you dead. And people do what? And they smoke it. An intellectual knowledge of what is right and wrong does not work in getting to the kingdom of God. You've got to have it more than just up here. Hebrews 10, 16, I write my law where? Yeah. And where else? Yeah, you've got to know it, but then you've got to do it. The seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. A man can know that and still break it. Isn't that true? Matthew 5, 28, to the man that looks upon a woman to lust after her, I already committed adultery in the heart. The only way to get right with God is to get it down here. Psalms 40, verse 8, I delight to do thy will. Oh, my God, thy law is where? My heart. King David said that. Now we're ready to begin. Uh, intellectual knowledge is not enough. We had a great war on drugs in the U.S. in the 1960s. The, thing, the, the, the slogan, the theme, just say no. Did it work? No. Just say no to that fourth piece of cake. It doesn't work. Say no to pornography. It doesn't work. Just saying no does not work. I was a drunkard going to school when I was 23. That was the fashion. I was a drunk. All my friends were drunks. I'm going to a biology class. I'm drinking a beer. 23. I look in the rearview mirror of the car. I see enlarged veins and bursting capillaries. The cause? I'm here. Then I looked at the beer, and I drank it. Yes, of course. Come on, yes. An intellect, no, uh -uh. It, it, it's not enough. Then what's the, the physiology? To understand the physiology of change, that's what we need. Let me define physiology. The adrenal glands, the pulmonary system, cardiovascular system, gastrointestinal system, all these systems put together to make you what you are. That's physiology, how it all works together. Now, habits. You have some habits you want to change? Yes. Come on, sure you do. Any Job's in the church yet? Job 1 verse 8, perfect. And nobody in this church is perfect. If you are, go home. You don't need to be here. All right? We all need to change something. And before the Lord comes, the church will be Ephesians 5 27 without wrinkle and without spot. The church is going to make some big changes. God gave us this to show us how. So this is what I want to study this morning. When you are uh, in the snow, you're up there in Nebraska, see you see it in the snow, you ski, you do it again, pretty soon you have a, a path, a road, a route, yeah. You think it, you think it again, pretty soon you have a path. One is a ski path, the other is a, a, a mental path, a mind path, a brain path, but the science is a neural pathway. What caused it? Repetition. Yeah, you did it once, you did it twice, and that's, a, and that's a habit, right? A ministry of healing. That which at first was very hard, very difficult. 
Very difficult. After a little practice, it becomes what? See Brother Welch over there, Professor Welch sitting there? Does he play the organ? Does he play the organ in a nice way? Come on, does he play the organ in a nice way? Is this, is this, the, is this the first day he ever played the organ? No, Brother Welch can do no wrong on the organ. Everything is right. That tells me what? He'd been playing that organ for a long time. That is the principle God gave us to help us do something. And as we do it more and more, it becomes easy. Anybody play the piano besides you? Yeah. But it's practice. How about the guitar? Even the minute movements of the fingers, A, B, the, the guitar chords, once you do it 10,000 times, it's easy. Now, what happened in the brain to make it easy? Yeah. But what physiologically speaking is happening in the brain to make it easy? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it working? So I'm going to use this, a, a car, right? Now, I've been driving a, you know, five-speed car for 40 years. If I put all of you on a bus, big bus, put everybody on the bus, I'm driving down the road, can I have a conversation with you while I drive the bus? Yeah, yeah I can. No, I can. I can talk and shift gears and push the brake. I, maybe I shouldn't, but I could, I'm, right? I've done it so many, but the first time I did it, what happened the first time? Yeah, he stalled out, shaking and jumping and jiving and stalling out. But today when I do it, no problema. Now the physiology of that, the brain is controlling the foot, true? Okay. Now as we're going down the road, you have crocodiles here in Barbados. What's the biggest thing you've got here? A cow? A cow. All right, cow. We're going down the road. I'm driving. I'm talking. I'm engaging in fellowship. All of a sudden, a cow walks out across the road. And then my brother here says, hey, there's a cow in the road. Is it possible not to push the gas, but I've been doing it 25,000 times. Is it possible now to say, stop, push the brake? Is it possible? How does that work? How do you break an habitual behavior after doing it 100,000 times? Yeah, but yeah, the physiology. Now, that's true by choice. I say amen. But he did not describe the physiology, how it works in the brain. How? Now, you got four words to learn this morning in our neurophysiology class, four words. The first is dendrite. Dendrite receives input, the other is axon, it sends, it sends it out. So you have two nerve cells, the axon sends, the dendrite receives. The axon is long, the dendrite is short. It's like if Jesse were standing beside me, I'm the long, he's the short. I'm the axon, he's the dendrite. I send, he receives. Any questions? Of course not. Now, that's pretty simple. Now, next. There's a little more detailed picture. You know the axon, you notice on the end now it does this. It branches. Anybody in here speak French? A little bit. What's the well? I'll ask you the question in a second. Yeah, that's the axon, the dendrite. Now here's a picture. You can't see it, but it's two adjacent nerve cells. Here's the problem. The axon and the dendrite, they never touch. They'll never touch. They'll never touch. The space in between, word number three, is called the... Synapse. Synapse. Or synapse. You got different pronounce you're, you're different, you know. Synapse, synapse, what are you going to say? Synapse. That's the space in between. Now, next question. If we're all standing in water, I get electrocuted, what happens to you? Yeah, are we hydropower, wind power, solar power, steam power, electric power? What powers us? Electric. Yeah. If you don't believe me, put your finger in the wall socket and you'll, yeah, EKG, it's we're electric powered. Now, I got killed and so did he. Why? We're standing in the water. Why did he die too? Yeah. Yeah, connectivity. The water is a conductor. So we're looking for some way for the axon to communicate with the dendrite across the synapse. You need some kind of conductor. You need some kind of chemical to transmit between two neuros called a... Say it louder. Neurotransmitter. 
And a neurotransmitter bridges the gap, an electrochemical that crosses the synapse and communicates to the adjacent nerve cell. Today, all these antidepressant drugs, uh, Zoloft, Xanax, Prozac, Wilbutrin, SSRI drugs, selective serotonin. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. People talk about dopamine and norepinephrine. Those are neurotransmitters. God communicates where? In the neurotransmission in the brain. This is where, this is where the Holy Ghost is working, right there. So those are your four words, axon, dendrite, neurotransmitter, and synapse. No questions so far. Pretty simple. Now, when they discovered, when they discovered this, the man that made the discovery was a French scientist. See this thing here? That little, you can't see it. It looks like a ball. If you could see the picture on a good monitor, it looks like a chocolate chip cookie or a soccer ball or something. But the man, the French scientist that saw it, he said it looks like a, now say that in French. It's very good, bouton. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm a hillbilly. Bouton, right? He said, that's a bouton. Because it looks like a, and today we call it bouton or synaptic vesicle. So there it is. He saw it. The axon on the top, what's all over it? These little buttons. And on the bottom, the dendrite space in the middle, the synapse. And he thought, what's that? And then they made the discovery that's changed brain science. He noticed you do something, you got three buttons. You do it again, you got more. Maybe five, you do it again, you got seven, you do it again, you got nine, you do it again, you got eleven, you do it again. He said, what are those things? They are multiplying as you repeat an action more and more. So you, you got a biology student, what are you? How do you know all this? How, how do you know all this? I went to school. I school. <laughs> Man's up here giving the answers. That's good. They didn't know what it was. Ah, friends, and they made the discovery. Not just what it is, but what it did. Guess what's inside those little buttons? Neurotransmitters. So every time you do it, you wire yourself to do it again. And the more you do it, the easier it is to do because you are pre-wired, hardwired for that activity and it takes very little purpose or effort to do it again and again and again. Man's been smoking cigarettes 40 years, right? After breakfast, his hands go into his pocket. Does he have to think about it? No way. That is a habit. How do you break out of it? Now, let's, the physiology. I'm driving down the road. I got you a little uh, device so you can tell. Acetylcholine is a, is a uh, neurotransmitter. Every time I push the gas, going down the highway on the bus, every time I push the gas, acetylcholine, because I made the decision to push the gas, acetylcholine is being released in every synapse. It's bridging the gap saying, that's what it's saying. It's saying what? Press. It can only say stop or go, yay or nay, yes or no. It says, yes, press, push, go forward. It's the green light. It's the brain, but the communication, the signal is via the neurotransmitter in the synapses. Now, there's a cow in the road. I make the decision, I'm not going to kill the cow. And the foot goes to the brake. What changed? Physiologically, what changed? Yeah, but what it told, told me to stop. What told me to stop? The brain, but the brain sent the message through what? Say it louder. The neurons, but you had to bridge the gap, the neur neurotransmitter. So instead of acetylcholine, it's now gamma immunobutyric acid. It says what? Stop. The neurotransmitter changed because your, your thoughts change, your decision change, your brain change. It's that simple. That's the physiology. When you make a decision to change, then... The decision is transmitted through these neurotransmitters. I'm not going to smoke that cigarette. Boom! Gamma butyric acid. I'm going to smoke that cigarette acetylcholine. But the chemical is a result of what you choose. How crazy it is for somebody with depression to go to the doctor and the doctor says, I'm going to give you a pill to make you happy. Friends, you're unhappy because you made the wrong decision. You got four husbands, you got 
you, got a, you, you hate your children, you're a bank robber, and you're unhappy? Of course. You need to what? Change. And the doctor says, let me give you a pill to make you happy. This is the insane world we live in. Nobody wants to change. Give me a pill. Yeah. This is the answer for depression, stress, anxiety, and panic attacks. This is the answer. Now, this man is doing what? Jumping. There's the fastest man in the world right there, right? They call him, what's his name? Bolt. Bolt. By the way, I was, in, I was doing lectures in Kingston, and a lady jumped up. She said, that's my brother. I said, who's your brother? She says, Bolt. I said, is that his real name? He's a lightning bolt, right? That's his real name. I did health presentations to the Bolt sister. Can she run fast? I don't know. I didn't ask her. But he's jumping. He's running. He's throwing. Now, here's the question. By the way, this man was one of the number one brain scientists in the world. He taught Eldon Chalmers, Ph.D., taught at Southern Adventist University, taught what? Brain science, ca uh, ca uh, counselor, doctor, an ordained minister, Seventh-day Adventist minister of the gospel. He put the physiology and religion together. I'm going to quote from him once or twice. Well, once, because my clock's running out. You can't read it from back there. Whew, sorry. I'll have to, you can, I'll just tell you what it says. Physiologist, I'll just tell you what it says. Somebody that's close can verify it. You want to make $800 U.S. dollars an hour? No, $800 an hour. Just become a behavioral psychologist. What does he do? He comes in. You sit down. I'm an athlete. He sits down beside me. He begins to talk to me. I rehearse in my mind. I project what I'm going to do on the sports field. After he talks to me and I pay him, I go out, I jump, fat, I jump high, run fast, and throw harder. And uh, Chalmers is about to explain how that works, but what he uses is physical therapy. You go into the shopping mall, you see somebody with partial paralysis, kind of, you know, dragging their left, usually the left side, partial paralysis, weakening in the, in the uh, motor skills. That man had a what? Two kinds of strokes. Two kinds of strokes, ischemic and hemorrhagic. On the left is the ischemic stroke. Hemorrhagic, it means your brain, your blood vessel in your brain burst and you're dumping blood into your brain, hemorrhage. Forget that, we're using the other kind. When you see the word ischemic, it relates to circulation. So an ischemic stroke, blood flow of the brain has been cut off. And usually, now you, can you see the, uh, you can hardly see it, see the little gray part in the brain? I'm gonna flip the thing. That gray part is what part of the brain? Can you see it? That little gray part, that's the part that usually dies first. Oxygen deprivation equals tissue death. And that's the part that usually dies first. What part of the brain is it? Motor? Yeah, motor cortex, which operates motor, or I'll make it simple, this. And when that part of the brain dies first, this becomes this. Who do you call? Well, see the neurologist. He sends you to who? Or you say physiotherapist here, right? Okay, a physiotherapist. When you get there, what does a physiotherapist do? That's right. He said, well, sit down here, friend. Okay. By the way, this is the important part. If your neighbor is asleep, wake them up. This is the important part. This is the part that's going to help somebody in the church this morning. So... Physio, physio, physiotherapist comes, we say physical therapist, same thing. Physiotherapist comes in, he says, open your hand. I can't, I had a stroke. Open your hand. I can't, I had a stroke. And then he takes out a can opener, you know, a can opener, and he cuts off my, my skull, lifts it right off. And then what he does, he plugs in a uh, millivolt meter into my motor cortex. Now, there is a science for what I'm about to say. Whenever you make a choice, when you choose to open and close your hand, there is a change in the electrical activity in that part of the brain. A scientist would say, a big scientist would say, there's a change in readiness potential in the motor cortex zone of the brain. But there's a change in activity, electrical current. And a millivolt meter measures that current. So now it's sticking in my brain, right? He said, open and close your hand. I can't. What about your other hand? Yes, yeah, fine. Okay, open and close it and watch the needle. So when I open my hand, 
What does the needle do? Of course, yeah. He said, okay, your other hand. Open your hand. I can't. I had a stroke. Well, just think about it. <laughs> okay. Open, close, open. What's the needle doing? It's moving. No, it's moving. Why? Proverbs 23, verse 7, is a man thinketh in his heart. The pathways are not formed by what you do. They're formed by what you think. That's it. Now, that's good news. No, that's, that's hallelujah. Or that's, uh, that's, uh, that's trouble. Because that means somebody comes into the church and we chain them up, drag them down to the ocean and baptize them. They come up the same stinky center they went down. Romans, four, Romans 6 verse 4, newness of life. Mm -mm. Why? Because it has to be your choice. That's the problem. We want to shape the outside and change the outside and do things to the outside. Christmas tree. Christian, it's all on the... Because they didn't make the choice on the inside. Friends, the habits are not by what you do. It's by what you think. Now, let's say a woman... The divorce rate in the U.S., the divorce rate is going sky high. Number one cause of divorce is adultery. A woman comes into the room. She doesn't know about brain chemistry. She doesn't know what we just studied. She walks up to her husband. He's looking at something there on the computer. Looks over his shoulder, sees what he's looking at. Does she know intuitively, innately, a second sense, does she know that that's not, not good? Does she know what's having an effect on her husband? Nobody in the church answered. Ladies, if your husband's watching pornography, does it have an effect on him? But all he did was look. No, all he did was look. It's not what he does. It's what he... And when you look, you what? You think. Job 31 verse 1, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I... Think. It says think upon. It doesn't say look. It says think upon a maiden. What you look at, you think about. You mean this is a call to guard my eyes? Oh, yes. And that's when the war begins in the church. Standards. What you look at, what you eat, what you... Administration, uh, administration education, music, diet, dress. And that's when the war begins. Second Corinthians. So I just, my time's gone. So that's it. No, no, no. I'm not taking your time. So, you know, I'm not, no, no, I'm taking your time. No, no, no. I'm not going to take your time. Now, panic disorders. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Let all things be done decently. God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of, that's in the church. I want to be a, I want to be a, a son of God this morning. <laughs> you know. So now, you can't read the last part. I'll just tell you what it says. Ah, I can't read it either. Panic disorders, phobias, obsessions, all these mental health disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar, ADHD, panic attacks, stress, all these mental disorders, you don't fix a mental disorder by changing the stomach. A woman that can't stop eating, you don't give them a bariatric bypass. You don't staple their stomach, you staple their brain. Isn't that right? The world is upside down. The world is Matthew 23, 24. They strain it in that and what? Swallow a camel. Their priorities are upside down and inside out. They don't have the Bible to guide them. They don't want the Bible to guide them. Well, some of those people in the, yeah, in the sermon hour, our subject is the Bible to guide us. See, I went home last night. Pastor Beckel said, how did it go in the church? <laughs> I sweated. I was a tough, tough meeting. Last night, our subject was food war and how the devil is trying to destroy you at the Shephet. And it was, a it was a war in the church last night. Revelation 12, 17, the dragon was wroth with the what? Church. It meant to make war how? At the Shephet. I, I, I left the church. I was, I was, uh, I was afraid. I, I risked my life in the church last night. Now, the pathways are established. Now, the last part. The pathways are establishing habit tendency. Somebody help me. New nerve growths and new buttons are... Forming with every thought, every time you have a thought, every time, one thought, and that starts 
a habit. Now, intentions and desire create the pathways. Let's take now, let's take what we've learned. A man comes to our program. By the way, I work in, a, in health ministry. I wanted to be a pastor, but yeah, and God said, no good. <laughs> I can't be a pastor. So now, then I wanted to be an evangelist. God said, no good. And then he said, you're my now health evangelist. That was good. So I talk about the Bible and health always together. Is that okay? I like that. That's like that. So somebody comes to our lifestyle center, 40 years, 40 years, right? And then they have like a chimney. So after lunch, here he comes. I'm sitting beside him. And this is not theoretical. This is real. His hand's going for that pocket. Of course, there's nothing in the pocket. He didn't. How are we going to help him? And don't you say, chain him up, put tape on his mouth. That won't change him. How are we going to change him? Yes, yes, and yes. Let me tell you what we did. It's really very simple. I reach out, take his hand. I say, my dear brother, it's a beautiful day. Why don't we go for a... He says, why don't we go for a walk? You're choice. Huh? Let's go and get a walk. Aerobic exercise. Mm, your choice. What do you think? Okay. Off we go. Next time, why don't we go for a next time? Why don't we go for a next time? 28 days later, he finishes his lunch. He looks at me and says what? Okay. That's it. Now, two laws. Number one, as a in the beginning, is it a war? As one pathway strengthens and another weakens, is it a battle and a war? The good news, after, you know, three, four, couple months, three months, four months, does it get a little easier? When I stopped drinking, I was, uh, I was uh, 34, 34 years old. I, I finally went into the church at 35. At, 30, I never, at 35 years old, I never opened the Bible, never prayed, never been, didn't know anything. I couldn't even spell God, right? Three-letter word, couldn't spell it. I stopped drinking at 34. When I would see a beer, I just start shaking for it. You know? But now, you got to fight the fight. And that's what Daniel did, right? Daniel 1.8, he purposed in his, in his heart that he would not yeah, you know the purpose of temperance in the church? Remember what Samson said, Judges 19? <laughs> Get her. She... Thank you. Pleases me well. What pleased Samson about her? Shape of her leg? No, no. It's just shape of her leg. It's a brute beast man. A man turned into a what? Animal. Oh, I like to wear her leg. I like her leg. I like the shape of her gluteus maximus. I like the, you know, get her. She pleases me when at the first night, clock, seven minutes, first night, you know, the first night. Oh, what's the secret of your strength? Second night, what's the secret of your strength? Third night, what's wrong with Samson? <laughs> Samson, first step, Samson did what? He, he looked. King David, what did he do? He looked. And I know you don't want to hear this. And I'm sorry, but I made a deal with God. I would be faithful to the truth, and if you want to kill me, that's your business. They looked. I've done educational programs in other parts of the Caribbean and South America. They say, well, it's okay to look, but don't touch. And I thought, that came straight from hell. What do you say here in Barbados? I don't know what you do here. Same thing. <laughs> Same in America. But, yeah. And then, of course, the third night, God helped Samson, right? Did God help Samson? When the Philistines got him, what's the first thing they did? They ripped out his eyes, <laughs> saying, I can't see anything. Did that help him? Yes. Is God good all the time? Is God good? Two people. <laughs> no, is God good? Three people. <laughs> yeah. 
And then this is the gospel, and we hate the gospel. This is the gospel, and oh, we hate it. When you can preach this kind of gospel and all the people say, Amen, then you know you've entered a heavenly choir. Because everybody up there says, Romans 3 verse 4, Let God be true, and all you folks down on the earth be liars. And this is the gospel truth. It's the only way we will ever change. We have to stop thinking before we stop doing. Wouldn't you agree? Because as a man thinks, so he is. By the way, this is ten hours long. This is just the beginning, 10 hours long, of how to have a brain that functions like a Christian. This is what a real picture of it. This is what's inside between your ears, a picture of it. Now, this is lunch today. What do you think? No, wait a minute. That's bananas and a beet on top and carob syrup and walnuts. Isn't that okay? That's, that's, now, no cholesterol in a banana. It's banana ice cream. Now, this is my wife's a cook. Now, let's make it practical, and I'm done. My wife's a cook, best cook in the world. Married 37 years, best wife in the world. Every man can have the best wife, right? When I married my wife, she was a Buddhist. Yeah, I won't tell you what I was. But there it is, the best cake in the world. I sit down. That's a good cake. Oops, got to have my thing here. I sit down, pretty good cake. I have a piece. And I say, well, you know, that's pretty good cake. Why not what? I have a piece. Pretty good. Why not? I have a piece. Hey, that was better than the last one. Why not? Now, as I begin to think about the fourth piece, I hear a little still small voice saying what? Because the dendrites have multiple inputs. Some say... And some say, no. Some say, you're a pig. You've had three pieces. Stop before it's too late. The other says, one more won't hurt. Now, I'll tell you what God has done. In God's infinite wisdom, He made this little thing called the, it's the last cell in the chain, and this cell hardwires right into the muscle, into the hand. And what that cell tells you to do, you will do. What's that cell going to say? I'm going to try to explain it in a simple way. Nothing. Until there is a differentiation, a range change of more than 10 millivolts one way or the other. Every input comes in millivoltage. 27 millivolts eat, 26 don't eat, it won't do anything. It cannot activate, cannot fire, can't have the sodium ion interchange, can't do anything unless there's a 10 millivolt differentiation. 30 and 25, nothing. 32 and 26, nothing. But when you hit a, a, a span of 10, 60 eat, 50 don't eat, then you will eat. Or 60 don't eat, 50 eat, then you will what? Now, the way Chalmers explains it, the physiology and everything, you can't really read it, but what I just said is what he says. So last but not least, when I was in my 20s, all my friends, smoking ganja, drinking beer, all these things. Today I'm 60 years old. Can somebody say amen? 60 years old. Should be dead, but I'm 60. Talking about God. 60 years old. I go back to see my friends. Today they are 60 years old. Well, a lot of them are dead. No, a lot of them are dead. Today they're 60 years old, 62. And they see me. Hey, man, there's Lou. There he is. And they offer me, here, smoke this and drink this. That doesn't surprise you, does it? No, well, it's human nature. And I say, well, no thank you, I'm trying to stop. And they say what? Exactly. See, we're, we're in a different, a different culture here, right? Barbados states. But it's all the same, right? It's all the same. One eats rice, one eats corn, one eats wheat. It's all the same. Inside, we're all the same. Come on, try... Now, I'll give you a change of scenario. I go up to my friends, and they say, Here, hey, hey man, smoke this, drink this. And I say, Please listen to me. What you're offering me almost destroyed my home, my health, my, my 
brain, everything I hold near and dear, my home, my marriage, everything I hold of value, that almost destroyed. Please, don't you offer me anymore. What changed? Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes. I'll say my purpose. My millivoltage just got turned up. What gives a man or a woman a purpose? Because uh, parents, when the devil comes to your children and he offers them drugs and premarital sex, you ain't going to be around. The devil makes his approach when the parents are not there. And unless you have done something for your children in this department to give them a strong purpose, a high millivoltage, they will fall. How do you get a purpose? How do you get an increase in millivoltage? Brain part two, tomorrow night. I'll pray before I stop. Father in heaven, have mercy on your people. Have mercy on me. Please come close for our church service this morning. If ever there was a people that need you, it's us. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.